Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of stoner rock, exploring the band Acid Bath with the song Pagan Love Song off of Pagan Terrorism Tactics. We've only checked out one other Acid Bath song. I think it was The Blue. Y'all can let me know if maybe I'm forgetting... Uh, one of the other times we've checked them out, but I think it's just the one. I recognize the uh, album art from whatever album that was. I don't recall this being very stoner rocky, though. Maybe I just have a bad memory of what that song was, but I kind of remember it being quite chaotic. And this week, stoner rock has kind of showed me that it's a bit on the tamer side as far as composition and structure, except for Elder, which has been bonkers with this rhythmic ideas so i'm interested to see where acid bath takes this let's dive in check out some pagan love song That bass kick is massive. Yeah, dude, the bass kick and snare is bonkers. You know what's interesting though is this is a very different sound than the other three bands we've checked out this week. Which might just speak to a flexibility of the stoner rock genre. <laughs> the ride symbol just popping up over here like this hasn't been a super bass heavy song this whole time Oh, interesting production on that. When did this come out? 96, so this predates everything else we've checked out this week. By at least a decade, I think. I think it's the only pre-2000s track that we've checked out so far. Yeah. Yeah. 
Some of these uh, symbol hits are out of time. Such a 90s sound though, with that heavy reverb on the vocals. Feels a lot like Alice in Chains. But a lot of the vocal inflection, how the vocalist moves into and out of syllables, reminds me of Power Man. There's lots of cool influences on the vocal delivery here. All right, so if this is stoner rock, which it very well could be, it's breaking pretty much every pattern that I've uh, I've come to associate with the genre based on what I've been exploring this week. This song doesn't. I mean, it kind of feels like it it pulls from heavy metal but not in a way that it's directly referencing it just in the way that a lot of modern metal is influenced by heavy metal when we looked at Caius and we looked at Elder especially and uh, what did we check out yesterday mm, fire high on fire the riffs from those felt like they could have been played by a heavy metal band in the late 70s and 80s. This this doesn't. This is distinctly 90s. It still has a little bit of that uh, bluesy... It's like a semi-blues chord progression. It's not the full thing. It's missing some of the emotional punch. But it still has that the same body of a blues chord. Um... And so just because of that plus electric guitar, it's going to have some of these heavy metal vibes to it. But like I said, I, I couldn't hear most of these riffs being played by some of the classic heavy metal bands. Whereas I could with the other three bands we've checked out this week. And so my whole idea that stoner rock was heavy metal plus big meaty guitars isn't really true. At least not when we consider Acid Bath. This breaks my whole understanding. It also doesn't have big meaty guitars. They are large and fuzzy, but kind of weak compared to the other bands we've been checking out. I don't know if I should chalk that up to the song or the era. As I mentioned, this is the oldest song we've checked out this week by I think at least a decade maybe only half a decade though uh, but again it's the only one we've checked out pre-2000 and maybe the thinness of the production has to do with that maybe it has to do with some other technical element or financial element or something like that regardless this is not a big sludgy post-rock guitar tone it, it is big it is overdriven it is distorted but it doesn't take up the whole of the sound the song has a lot more room for vocals on it but the vocals are also quite distant and uh kind of tuned more to the treble side on the eq it's kind of lacking a bassiness and there's a lot of reverb on it which is something that we saw uh not with high on fire but with caius and elder so the vocal production is very similar between all of these I, I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just laying out puzzle pieces, trying to see what I can build with it. Because this really threw a big wrench in the, in the thing. But enough with that. I'm trying to rack my brain on this. What is the song doing? What is it saying? How is it saying it? This song 
it doesn't really care about riffs too much, which I suppose is another way it kind of differentiates itself from the rest of the pack this week. It does have riffs, but not in the classic memorable way that we've seen most of this week with something you can hum. We did have that ending idea that had a lot of notes to I mean a lot of notes, had like three notes to it, but that's more than like the two note ideas that we heard at the beginning of the song, where really I don't think the two notes themselves matter that much as as much as that there was a higher and a lower note for them just to have some contrast in it and just for movement, so it wasn't purely just a rhythmic uh, riff. It kind of takes the idea that we saw on something like High on Fire's, uh, something about snakes, snakes of the divine, um, with the pedal tone idea. Uh, something like, so you hang on a pedal note for a long time and then at the end of the riff is when you play your cool thing what what makes the riff itself that is a very classic heavy metal thing it's something we've seen a bit this week we don't see that here this riff is all about rule of cool uh sonic texture and atmosphere i think there's two notes in it uh, I don't even know the order that they go back and forth because they might only be a half step apart. There's not a lot of movement to it at all. It's not like we're jumping up an octave or a fifth. We're literally going to, on a keyboard, it would be literally the next note. What, what, not the same color notes, the next one. Uh, the closest button or, or key next to the one you start on. Not a lot of movement to it. Um, but the distinction is that there is a pitch change again i don't think it matters that it's c and c sharp or or e and f or something like that it's simply that we have a note we go up a little bit we come back down just the movement is what's important because the atmosphere isn't really based on any melodic pitched quality of the riff it's sort of just about the sound of the guitar we do punctuate it with a higher note that has a lot of waviness to it i don't know if that is just a really wide vibrato on the guitar or maybe it's an effect some sort of pedal that creates that but we get that at the end of every four bars it feels like there's a lot of space between these so i think that works in its favor if we heard that more often it might have gotten on my nerves um but that's really the only change that we get out of this low plodding fuzziness just like i said if it was any more booming if there was more bassiness to it it would just kind of be a, well, I didn't say this, I thought it, it'd be a new metal riff. It'd be modern metalcore, where the riff itself isn't about memorability of, of melody. It's just about atmosphere. Does it sound cool to listen to? Yeah, then you got a solid riff there. Um, and that's, that's why this feels, I think, more modern than the other tracks, which very much trace their, their lineage through their riff writing. So that's just a really big difference there, and I, I think it ultimately works for them. The song's also quite a bit shorter. I think this will be the shortest track we check out this week, um, and it's missing, well, another thing that's kind of been a showcase all week, which is the bridge. We do have one in here, and we do get a new riff with it. We get a new vocal style. We get a new time feel. It's, it's a modern bridge, though. We get a new section uh to to sing on top of basically making a brand new verse for the song in all the other tracks the bridge has been a solo section it's been a way to expand the song with uh monday and tuesday's track literally having like a, a prog rock exploration in the middle of the a pretty typical song structure and then yesterday, kind of bringing in a solo section and uh, some expanded instrumentation and a full-on C and D section to be repeated back and forth. This this is just a typical A, B, A, B, C, B track. There's nothing special about it. The bridge isn't a solo section. It isn't a proggy uh, instrumentation. It isn't uh, a linear exploration through a series of, of new ideas. It's, hey, we have a new kind of similar but different guitar riff and a new vocal melody. And we're just going to play that here until we cut back. 
to uh, to the chorus. So this kind of deviates from, again, from that heavy metal origin, looking at something more modern, what rock and metal was doing here um, uh, at the late 90s, and more importantly, I think, into the 2000s. Really being a bit forward-thinking there. Um, so yeah, that's... Uh, I'm, st I'm trying to piece all this together, man. It's just not adding up for me at all. But that's an interesting thing there, too. To, to have that modern structure in a track this week. <laughs> Like I said, this whole song threw a, a wrench in, in my plans. Um, I do want to bring up the drums here. The drums are absolutely bonkers, at least in the first half of the song. They take a back seat, I think, on the back half, and I actually kind of hate the drums on the back half of the song. They introduce a ride cymbal idea, which I think the idea itself is solid, but the production on it is kind of wonky. It's placed way out to the side. Maybe it sounds better uh, on speakers instead of headphones, but it feels distant from the rest of the kit. It's very present in the mix where the rest of the drums are mixed in rather nicely. And on top of that, the drummer frequently hits ride cymbal accents that well, actually, the accents are on beats, but are on beats. But when we get to some of the non-accented hits, they're a little behind. It's almost like he, he has the pressure for the accented ones, but when he just has to do a little hit, it's like he doesn't put the same speed into it, and so it drags a little bit. It's wild listening to when he would uh, hit accent one and then do a light two, three, four, one, two, three, four... And the guitar is also playing quarter notes. And you realize that they're nowhere near on time. <laughs> Wild idea. Um, like I said, I think on paper it's a solid concept. The production's awkward. The performance drags. It's not, it's not my favorite ride cymbal part. And I'm usually a huge fan of adding cool ride cymbal rhythms on top of straightforward snare and bass ideas. So, for me to say I wasn't on board with this, I think that means something. But the first half of the song is bonkers, dude. Between the bass and the snare, the drummer is taking up so much space doing uh, these complex rhythmic ideas. It's even cool. We get some, uh, I think, some polyrhythm in there a little bit. And some of it might not, might not be intentional, listening to the end of the song and how the drummer can be a little iffy on time. <laughs> Maybe some of it was just really rough timing and they should have been more in sync and instead created something polyrhythmic out of it. Regardless, the end result is very interesting, very energetic, very driving. I think it keeps the entire first half of the song pushing forward at a breakneck pace. And for me, added something interesting to listen to because the guitars, very rule of cool stuff. It sounds great. It's just not a lot to dig into critically. Um... And so having the drums doing something kind of off the wall gave me something to, to listen to and analyze. And, and I dug that and uh, it gave the song a lot of energy moving forward. And that's, I mean, I, that was kind of, I, I tend to have ideas in more of a linear fashion with like segues between concepts. I didn't really have that here, just kind of stream of consciousness. But I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I touched on the vocal production and pronunciation a little bit there at the end of the reaction um how the guitar we do have some proper guitar riffs towards the end of the track uh with some pitched movement but it's still generally i think an atmospheric rule of cool sound more so than making memorable riffage um it's just a different type of riff creation uh, the bass is kind of non-existent in most of this. You can hear it, but it's it's just doing pedal tone stuff. Um, and the structure, uh, yeah, I touched on. Let me hit some lyrics on this, I guess. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I even liked the song. It's very straightforward. I don't think I would turn it off. It feels like something I've heard on the radio, but Acid Bath is just. It's not a band I think would have ever gotten radio time, even though I think it really would have fit in with the likes of Alice in Chains um, and Power Man. You know, other bands that definitely got radio time over here in, in the U.S., this feels right in the same pocket. 
and for whatever reason, yeah, you know, songs like this just never showed up. So I want to turn it off. I think it's fine. It's just not anything I would seek out. Yeah, lyrics. And once again this week, I'm a bit lost on the lyrics. There's uh that's definitely a trend. <laughs> I think Caius was the only track that I, I had a strong grasp on what it was about. It kicks off. Says, dying felt so good today, and if I was ever alive, it's hard to say. I was kissing my eyelids and burning my face away. We dance the electric pagan love song. We hunt with the children palling in the catacombs. Now, there is an annotation on this, which provides a little bit of context if true it says the legend goes that the lyrics reflect a time when dax who i believe is the singer i don't know i'm going to assume at least the lyricist whoever that is when dax was in florida on tour with acid bath and some locals gave them jimson weed a potent dissociative it says that many people who have taken this report having felt that they were dying during the trip so, if this song is about the narrator's drug trip and taking a very potent drug at that, some of this makes sense. Dying felt so good today. The drug keeps you high even if you feel like you're dying while on it. Kissing eyelids and burning faces away. I guess... Verse 2 says we're eating dead flowers and bleeding in a strange daze. Mm. Jimson weed is a flower. It's been picked from its roots, so I'm going to assume that it's a way of talking about is eating dead flowers. Um, and so bleeding in a strange daze would once again speak about the trip itself. Says, I was cutting throats and eating tears, smiling in a ruined age, douse my love, everything with gasoline, gray flower blooms at your red light death scene. I don't know, back to the chorus, it says, we dance the electric pagan love song, we hunt with the children palling in the catacombs. I don't know what that means, man. Honestly, I don't know what most of this means. If the whole song is describing a drug trip, I've, that's going to make as much sense as anything else, I think. Verse 3 once again brings up uh, drug vocabulary. It says, we're tripping on real blood in strange sunshine. That's the second time blood's been mentioned. It says, have you felt such weight upon your eyes? I've been tripping in your sky and woke up adrift in a technicolor bliss 10 million miles high. The song continues to go in this direction, making these wild parallels and misusing um, senses. Maybe that's all the song is about. However, it ends rather aggressively. It says, I am the mother, the father, the killer of the light. I am shapeless, deathless, remorseful. I'm feeling hollow again the final line just says i'm gonna cut you all right so i don't know man maybe that's all it's supposed to be about it describes a trip on some really heavy drugs and you know stoner rock right <laughs> I think this is the only song we've checked out all week that actually is about drugs. And maybe Stoner Rock isn't supposed to be or isn't typically about drugs. But I'm kind of glad we got to one that was. Fits the name. Uh, I don't know. These are my thoughts. Pagan Love Song, Acid Bath. What do you think of this? Anything stand out to you? Is there anything that you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Tell me how I'm wrong about my interpretation of things. Maybe you just want to add to the conversation. You got something to bring up that I didn't touch on at all. 
put all that stuff and whatever else you want to do in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today, but I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC as usual. We're going to wrap this up with our final stoner rock track, and maybe by then I'll have some understanding of how this genre works. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.